So you may have heard of binary before, but what actually is it and how do you actually convert numbers back and forth between binary and our regular accounting system, which is decimal. So first off, let's take a look at how decimal kind of works. So if we take the number 123 here, there's a couple different ways of kind of envisioning how this number actually like works under the hood. Uh, but one of the main ways to think about it is we typically break these up into sections. So usually what we do is we would draw something like a line between the one, the two, and the three here. And what we do is we would call this the uh, this first number here would be the hundreds. The second number here would be the tens. And the third number here would be the ones. So the number 123 is actually three different numbers all added up together. It is 1, 100, 120, and 1, 3 all added together. And that's what the number 123 is in decimal. So if we're talking about binary, um, with regular decimal systems, we have zero to nine, and then we kind of have this sort of shift that happens. So usually if you have like a nine in the last far right hand side, you'll end up having to overflow that into a new value. So if we go ahead and we were counting from one to two to three, and then we got to nine, we would end up having to follow an algorithm where this nine would eventually become a zero. And then what we do is we would add a one to the next digit. So then it would become 10. And that's how we would count from one to 10. Then from there, we'd keep counting. And then when we got to 99, we'd go ahead, we would set this one to zero. So the first, um, the one digit would become a zero. And then from there, we would go ahead and we would add a one to this, which would then make this become a zero because it's become a 10. And then we would shift to the left again and we would add a one to the side there. And essentially the number 99 is saying there are 90 and, and nine. And then with the number 100, you're saying there's one 100, no tens and no ones essentially. So if we go back and take a look at number 123, we're gonna go ahead and convert that into binary. And so binary only has two numbers. So instead of going from zero to nine, we have one or zero. And the easiest way to think about binary numbers is to think about them kind of like uh, that system that I was talking about earlier, where we think about what the components are that make up a number. So when we're looking at this table that we have down here, we have the powers of two, the two to the zero, two to the one, two to the whatever, right? And this is basically how binary is laid out. So this is what's called an eight bit binary number, or it's also called a byte. So eight bits make one byte. And what a bit is, is it's gonna be an individual zero or one. And what we're looking at it here, so we have two to the zero, which is gonna be one. We have two to the one, which is gonna be two. We have two to the two, four. Two to the three, it's gonna be eight. Two to the four, it's gonna be 16. Two to the five, it's gonna be 32. Two to the six, 64. Two to the seven, 128, right? That's the number that we have. So this is gonna be our one byte binary number. And the algorithm that we use to convert between them is we go ahead and we take a look at this number. So we have one, two, three here. And at the very beginning, before we look at any of these columns, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a value called remainder. And remainder is gonna be set to our starting value. So our starting value is gonna be 123. And this method is called the continuous subtraction method. Um, there's other names for it. Um, but basically what we're gonna do, we have this remainder and we come in here and we say, okay, 128, is that larger or smaller than the remainder? Since it's larger than the remainder, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press zero here. And then we're just gonna move on to the next cell. And we're gonna be constantly shifting to the right. And then we're gonna be going through and we're gonna be subtracting stuff as we go. So 64 is smaller than 123. And so what we're gonna do for the step is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say one. And what this is saying is, yes, there is in fact one 64 that exists inside this one, this 123 here. And so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna subtract that 64 out of it. So we're gonna say 123 minus 64 for this step which is gonna be 59. So now that we have 59, we go to our next cell. We say, okay, is 59 smaller than 32? Yes, it is. Okay, so we go ahead, put a one in there, and then we're gonna go ahead and subtract 32 from it, which is gonna be uh, 27, yeah, 27. And then from there, we just keep following that same pattern. Okay, 27, we're gonna subtract 16 from it because we know 16 is smaller, so we're gonna add a one, and then we're gonna subtract 16 from it, which is gonna give us 11. Okay, eight, same story got a one and we're gonna go ahead and subtract eight which is gonna leave us with three and now we get to the four and we can see oh no there isn't a four left right now the remainder is actually smaller than the, the value of the current cell that we're on okay so now that's gonna be a zero because we're gonna say there isn't a four remaining right now okay now we move on to the next column we have a two yep that's gonna be the same and it's gonna be the same for the one here so we're just gonna do those two steps count together just to save us some time here okay so now that eventually becomes zero or three minus two minus one, because that's the steps we're following. Okay, perfect. So we know we've done this right because we know that our remainder is zero, and this is the number that we're left over with. And this number right here is the binary representation for the number 123. And so if we go ahead and we were to write this out normally, what you'd want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to say 
zero B, which is going to say that this is a binary number. You always want to include that. Otherwise, people don't know what base you're using. And we're going to say zero, one, 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 zero, one, one. And that is our 123 written out in binary. So how do we actually go back the other way around? Like, how do we make sure that we can uh, get back to a decimal number from a um, binary number? Okay, well, let's do this process in reverse. So like I said before, what we've done here is we've taken the number 123 and we've broken it down to constituent parts. We basically said there is 164 and there is 132 and 116 and 18 and no fours and 12 and 11. So then we add up all of the ones and then we get back to our original number. And so that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to do what's called the continuous add algorithm, which we start with a result of zero. In this case, we say we got a result that's starting off with zero. We start from the right hand side and now we go through and every time there's a one, we're going to add whatever value is at the top there to our result. So in this case, we have a one. So we're going to go ahead we're going to add a one. So result is going to be zero plus one, which is just going to be one. Perfect. Go to the next column. One. There's a two there. So we're going to say one plus two. Nice. That's going to be three. Next one is a zero. Okay. So we skip this column. Go to the next one. Okay, there's an eight there and there's a one there. So it's gonna be three plus eight, which is gonna be 11. And that's gonna be a value here. I'm gonna go to the left. Okay, 16 has a one there. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say 11 plus 16, which is gonna be our 27. I'm gonna go to the next one, I'm gonna say plus 32. And then we know that we also have this 64 here. So we're gonna say plus 64. And when we add all those three numbers together, we do end up with 123 again. Okay, so why does this actually matter? Um, there's tons of reasons, and there will actually be a link in the description to a page um, on a, a site that I made. But if you're interested, the site is called kieranwood.ca slash compsci.kb. It's just compsci, sorry. And what this is going to be is this is basically a site that has a whole bunch of information about computer science in general. But uh, we'll just give you a taste of what kind of the idea with this is. <clears throat> so we have all these numbers here. And let's say we want it, we have a computer. We want to be able to talk using that computer. How do we communicate? Well, the main way computers communicate is they send signals, and specifically they send electrical signals. So if we're looking at a graph like this, for example, what we can do is we can say, okay, there is a certain amount of voltage that can be applied to a given um, circuit. So let's say, for example, we have just like a wire, and we're going to communicate back and forth between one person, kind of like Morse code. And what we're going to say is whenever the wire is at 3.3 volts or lower, we're going to consider or anything below 5.5 volts, we're going to consider it to be zero. And that's going to be considered to be our off stage or our false stage. Then, if the wire ever has a voltage at 5.5 or above, we're going to consider that to be on or true. And so, this right here is our number from earlier. So if we go ahead and take a look at this, right, we start with 3.3 volts, which is a zero, and then we do that for one millisecond. So what we do on the other side is we'd say, okay, every one millisecond is going to be one bit from our number. So the first millisecond, we're going to be at 3.3 volts, which is going to be a zero. Then, for the next four milliseconds here, we're going to be at 5.5 volts, which is all ones. So for the next four milliseconds, up until five milliseconds, we're gonna pass all of these ones as a voltage across the wire. Then we have to go back to a zero for one millisecond because we have a zero right here. And then we gotta go back up to 5.5 volts and then keep that going for another two milliseconds. And then that's gonna be the end of our number, right? And so we tell them to basically go for eight milliseconds and to keep an eye on it. And this is what the number 123 would look like if it was passed across a wire using this system. Now, this is a gross simplification of what would happen in a computer, but it gives you an idea of what is sort of happening under the hood when you're thinking about a computer. Essentially, there is a certain amount of voltage and it's being passed back and forth, and that is creating zeros and ones that are being sent across to make logical sense out of whatever you're trying to do. And so, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, uh, be sure to check out the rest of the CompSci KB for more information. There will be a link down below specifically to the binary section, and that will include tons of more examples as well as tons more um, information and terminology that would be helpful for you if you're going to do any programming with this sort of stuff, as well as an actual programmed out um, version of this algorithm in Python, so you can see kind of how that looks like. So thank you for watching, and catch you in the next one.